All right, let's get started. So uh, we have some functor k from c to d. Uh, call that the comma category uh, k over x with x some object in d. Um, has all right as objects it has pairs w f from k w to x uh, with w an object of c. Um, I want to specify that say that it has to be a pair like this, because if you just said the map, you could have two different objects in C that that go to W, and those you want those to be to go to KW. You want those to be two separate objects. All right, because um, it's it's very tempting to sort of just specify the map, but that's not all of the information of an object in this category. All right, and the morphism between two pairs. So we've got say. Say V and a map G to W and a map F is uh, a map sigma from V to W in C such that uh, the following triangle commutes. So I want uh, to be over X, and I have KV. Kw, this is going to be k sigma, and so this is going to be uh, g, and this is going to be f, and I want this triangle to commute. All right. Uh, there is a projection functor which I will call. Uh, Prod upper star. And this is going from this comma category to C. Uh, and it's going to take um, W comma F to W and sigma to sigma. All right. Everyone's happy with this? Uh, and the fact I want this projection functor is one of the reasons why we need to keep track of this and not just say what the map is. All right. So, theorem. Um, so, what I'm going to do now is uh, say that um, under good conditions, we can ex explicitly say what a Khan extension is. Like we can, uh, in particular for each object, we can describe it as some co-limit. Um, all right, so let f be a functor from c to e, and k be a functor from c to d. If for all uh, objects in D, the co-limit of, all right, what do I want? I want to go from the comma category that I wrote down over there, so the comma category of the functor k over the object x. And I want to project this to C by this projection functor that I wrote down. And then I want to go via F to E. If for all objects D, this co-limit exists, then there is a 
left con extension of f along k with all right on objects it's left con extension of f along k applied to some object x is precisely this co-limit. Um, and the natural transformation, because a Khan extension comes equipped with a natural transformation. Uh, eta from F to this Khan extension composed of K is from the co limit cone. And we'll see what that means during the proof. All right. I should say that there's a dual statement for, um, for right count extensions. If we replace the co-limits with limit, then I can replace all the lefts with rights. Um, there is. Um, I, I'm not a huge fan of that statement. I understand why the category theorists like it, but I, I, it makes me uncomfortable. Um, you know, which, as we should say, I like doing the dual thing as an exercise, having seen the actual thing. Yes. So on, on morphism with lambda f, like, you pick out the way that the two co-limits are factored. Right. So this thing has to be a functor, and it's going to be it's going to be that, but we're going to build it. <coughs> All right. So. I mean, so we've defined this on objects, and we need to extend it to a functor. And that's what we have to do. We have to say what the map's going to be. So proof. All right, for each uh, pair WF, um, so this is WF in k over x. So for now, we're fixing some x. Uh, we have um, a map lambda x wf from fw to land k fx, such that uh, so the left con extension of the object x together with these maps is a cocone under this composition, so f and projection. Uh, this is by definition, right? This is a co-limit. It comes equipped with maps from um, a map for each object in here. Objects in here are w are pairs w f, uh, and we need a map from uh, the image of this object under this thing, which takes w f to w to f w so that's how i get this map um, and this is this has to be the sort of initial cocone for this to be a co-limit so we have a cocone it's the initial cocone under this functor okay <coughs> so uh, given some map say phi from x to y in D, uh, there's a functor 
phi lower star from the common category k over x to the common category k over y. Um, and it takes, so an object in here is, uh, is kw over x. And it takes it to kw over x over y um, by post-composing with phi. And maybe I'm going to just include w as part of this. Uh, and it sends morphisms to the same morphism, right? Because, because if I have kw over x and kd um, over x, if I do the post composition with y, this is still is a map with a relevant triangles commute. So, all right. Now, we have k over x, k over y, and c. All right, here we put phi star, and here we put the relevant projections. Based on how I described this, it's sort of clear that this thing computes, right? We have WF. In this way, it goes to W. This way, it goes to W uh, phi F. But it still goes to W in the end. All right. Given a cone under um, so given uh, given a cone under <coughs> under this um, this projection functor with f composed with f whether where we're doing the projection for y um, so I'm going to call the, so we're going to have a cone so it's going to be an object. And then it's going to be some collection of maps, say gamma. And now I'm going to, now I'm going to start. So I'm in here when I did these cones before I specified which object I was talking about. So um, and W F, right? So for each object in K over Y, we have one of these maps um, going from F W to Z. All right. So given such a cone over the y thing, we get a cone under fx by, um, by re-indexing. To okay, so I'm going to say Z and then gamma X W F, and I want to say what. So I'm going to keep the same object that I started with, but now I need to say what um, what these maps are with gamma X W F being. Gamma y w of phi f. Okay, which is to say that if I have if I have such an such a um, if I have such a um, such a if I have an object in here, it, it goes to only one object in here across this. 
And so um, I can just set, so sort of <coughs> this, this comma category has less things than this comma category, right? Because everything in here can be mapped onto something in here. Um, and I mean, it might not be injective, it, so it, it's not really less. But the point is that sort of I can uniquely get from this cocone to a cocone of things um, under this. All right. In particular, is everyone happy with how I constructed this, this extra cocone? It's kind of the key thing here. Okay. In particular, um, the oh, I just the wrong way around here. In particular, if I take the left Khan extension. Um, of f applied to y. So if I take the cocone of this form for y, uh, so uh, gamma y wf, this gives a cocone uh, land k f, y. Now the gammas are x, um, w, f, which is going to be equal to gamma y of w phi f. Uh, this gives us a cocone under fx, uh, f, f prod x. And so by the universal property of uh, the left Khan extension for x, there is a unique map um, which I call land k f phi going from the left Khan extension of x to the left Khan extension of y. Um, such that all right, it's, it's unique in that if we have fw, okay, x, k, f, y, um, here we have x, in our comma category. All right, so now we've turned this. So before, uh, when we started this, land kf was just um, something we did on objects. And now we've turned this into a functor from uh, d to e. All right. Um, I will. Uh, functoriality is left as an exercise. Um, but it's really not that difficult an exercise. 
um, you sort of will have to do like stacking of cocoons and things. It's, um, all right. OK, but that's only sort of half of this, right? We need this natural transformation. Um, and so now we're going to build that. And it's going to be fun because there are some fun diagrams. Um, OK. Now we're going to let eta of w be equal to uh, one of these map. So, OK. Uh, so this is from kw to land kf w. All right. Um, so this is kw id as an element of k over kw. Right, because I want to I want to have one of these for each object in C. Um, but this comma category I built using objects in D, and so I'm going to take the corresponding object in D. Um, okay. And so this is this is just one of the maps over this uh, that that in the code going defining this object. <coughs> All right. Um, given. Some. What have I written here? All right. Given some psi from v to w, we have. All right. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna have this commutative square. F to v, f v, f of w. <coughs> the um, left Kahn extension of f over k. KV, same thing of FW. W. OK. So across the top, we have F psi. Across the bottom, we have, well, we need to um, use the functor that we just built, so then KF of. Uh, in fact, of k psi, because psi is in c, and so we need a map in d. All right. So naturality means that I need to have um, the square commutes for uh, v and w. All right. This thing is lambda of kv, kv id. And this is lambda of kw, kw id. All right, so I want this to commute. And I'm going to show that it commutes by cutting it into two triangles and showing that the two triangles commute. So this map is going to be lambda of kv, kv, k psi. All right. Um, so I should say that uh, here, mm, Yeah, and by here I mean here. Um, uh, lambda kv kv k psi is lambda kv kv. Uh, Composed with the identity 
this is lambda of kw, uh, kb, ksi. All right, so. Which um, Oh no, this should definitely be FW, right? Because our natural transformation needs to go from F to left Kahn extension composed or K composed with left Kahn extension. So this should be F and this should be to W. Uh, to KW. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Okay. <coughs> All right. So, um, the so. The reason that I wrote this down is to show that this map here in the middle is also a map from the KW things. So um, the top triangle commutes uh, as this, these lambdas over KW uh, for some um, say xf is a cocone under f and it's the cocone defining this this here um, okay and then the bottom triangle commutes um, by the construction of land K F. I dropped a lot of Fs in, in my notes here, so please pull me up if I drop them uh, while writing. K of Psi. All right. So we defined this uh, here. Oh, here. We define this here. Um, and this bottom triangle is one of these triangles. All right, so this square commutes. So this thing is at least natural. <coughs> All right, so sort of the only, there are, there are two things left to see. Um, to see that this thing we've defined is a left Kahn extension, we need to see that it's initial um, and that any factorization out of it, well, I mean, we need to see that this initial. We need to see that for any other pair, there's a, there's a natural transformation to it and that that, natural trans that factorization is unique. So um, suppose. Uh, we have a pair, say G and gamma, um, where such that, OK, we have C to E and C to D. Uh, we have K and F. And suppose we have a G here together with a natural transformation gamma. We want to show that this gamma factors through um, this natural transformation here. <coughs> All right. Given uh, some WF in our comma category, K over X, we have the following diagram. All right, so F uh, so 
this is fw. Similarly, we have fv. We have gkw, gkv, and gx. All right. So, um, okay. So given. Okay, so we want this. Uh, ooh, okay, maybe let's. Sorry, let's have a map here. Uh, sigma from um, WF to uh, VG. Okay, so we have some map in our common category. And we're going to get a diagram like this. Across the top here, we have um, gamma w, right? So gamma goes from f to uh, gk. So gamma of w goes from fw to gkw. Um, we also have gamma v here. Um, here we can do f of sigma. So this is sigma after we've projected down to, uh, after we apply this functor, really, we get. Um, so you might actually write here uh, f, of, um, f of the projection of sigma. But that's just f of sigma when you think of sigma just as the one map. All right, and then here we have gk of sigma. Um, and then f goes from kw to x, and g goes from kv to x. So uh, this across the top, we can put g of f, and here we can put g of g. All right. This square is a naturality square for gamma. So that commutes. Um, this commutes because sigma is, um, because sigma started off in a comma category. And so in particular, it required that the, the triangle of x um, uh, k sigma commuted with um, f and g, right? That's that's what it means to for sigma to be a map in this comma category, and so we're just applying g to this triangle to show that this commutes. All right, so this diagram commutes. Um, so what am I trying to show here? Um, I'm trying to show that uh, that for every um, for everything that gets mapped to by this composition, the projection followed by f, we have a map to this object such that these triangles commute for any any map in the comma category. So in particular, this is a cocone under f, uh, under I'm sorry, under this projection x f. So g x, and then g g composed with gamma v for all objects VG in, um, in our comma category is a cocone under um, F and the projection for X. So by the universal property of this 
proton extension at f, there exists a unique map, alpha x, from land kf x to gx. All right. So these are the things that we want to be the, um, the components of our factoring natural um, transformation. OK. So now we need to show naturality again uh, with respect to x, right? Um, so I'm going to let gamma, sorry, phi, be a map from x to y and d. All right. So what we want to show is uh, just make sure that I can see this in the thing. Y, and we have the induced map between left con extensions. All right, and now we have GX and GY, uh, G phi, and now we want to show that for alpha X and alpha Y, this square can that that would show that this is a natural transformation from. Um, Land KF to G. All right. Um, <coughs> so, um, because uh, this is a, this, okay, this was defined as a map of co cones. So it suffices to show that the outside of this, uh, so this was gamma x w f, and this was gamma y uh, w phi f. Um, so it actually suffices to show that the outside of this commutes for, um, for all w f in the comma category over x. Uh, and that will show that this is natural. All right, and now we need to start erasing stuff. And we're almost there, and we'll uh, soon get to draw the best diagram that I've gotten to draw in this class, which is nice. Um, it is going to be non-planar. All right, so let's see. Now I'm going to take this square and I'm going to squish it. And hopefully I can draw this nicely. Um, it's not that easy. All right, so G x here, g y here. Uh, maybe I won't draw that one in last. All right. So here I have uh, land k f and phi. Here I have alpha y. Here I have uh, g of phi. Um, OK. Now here I'm going to put FW, which is the top of, of this diagram over here. And I'm going to put the, the arrows that I drew in also here. So this was phi, uh, lambda x of WF. And this was uh, lambda y of W phi f. All right. 
now I can draw in this arrow, side alpha y, uh, alpha x. OK. So at the moment, all I've done is I've sort of turned this on the side and then folded the top of it down. This is the same diagram that's over there. All right, now, by the way that we defined, um, so we defined alpha x uh, using some, some uh, cocoon, right? So we have um, a map to say gx uh, going through gkw from fw. So we have gkw, yep. Um, and we define this via uh, this is gamma w, and this is um, gf. All right, and actually we can do the same thing on the other side, and so this is g of uh, phi f. It's a nice triangular prism. My, uh, my, my drawing is not the best, but, uh, but yeah. OK, so um, now let's, let's see this, this thing. So the thing that I wanted to show was that going down this leg is the same thing as going down this leg and across. So I want to show that going down this here is the same as going up here and then down the back and across. OK. So g phi composed with alpha x composed with lambda x w f. So that's this, this, this. This is equal to g phi composed with GF composed with gamma W. OK, why is that? So what I'm claiming now is that this back square commutes, or the, the, the square here commutes. And so I'm saying that alpha x composed with lambda is the same thing as g of f composed with gamma. So I'm replacing the, this here with this here. <coughs> All right, uh, and this is true because of how we defined um, alpha. <coughs> um, ah, maybe I'll I'll actually draw something up for how we defined alpha, um, and that will make things clearer. So uh, maybe I'll just do it here. So we had FW, and then we had LAN, KX. All right. This universal cone comes equipped with these lambda maps, X, W, F. All right, and then we had GKW and GX. And we had this um, gamma W and gf. And that was the, these are the legs that defined the co this cocone under this, which gave us this alpha x map, this, this, this natural transformation. So we have, this is how we defined alpha x. <coughs> and so this is actually that back square. Um, and so that's how this commutes. So. This commutes by this. All right. And then this is equal to, OK, well, g is a functor. So I can compose these. g phi f composed with gamma w. All right. So I'm saying that I took this map. I um, 
pushed down to this square, so now I'm going this way. But this is a functor, so this, this triangle commutes, so now I'm going this way. Um, but this is equal to uh, alpha y composed with lambda y w pi f. And this also is just following from this square. So before I went from like the alpha and the lambda down to the gamma and the g of f, and now I'm going from the gamma and the g of this, func this map to the lambda and the alpha. OK. But this is the thing I was trying to prove. So I've just shown that this outside pentagon commutes, and it commutes sort of for all, all choices of w, f in k over x. Um, and so this square commutes because of how this, this map is defined as a map of co-cones. OK. So, um, and that was showing naturality. So alpha uh, is a functor from lan kf to g. That uh, is a natural transformation, sorry. All right. So we have a natural transformation. We need to see that it factors the thing, right? That's, that's what it's supposed to do. Um, uh, let's I need anything on here. I don't think so. OK, so we want to check that alpha kw um, composed with eta w equals gamma w. Right? That's the, that's the point of this. Um, so we have fw. GKW, this is gamma W, all right. And then we have eta W, which is, um, which we, did I erase this? I think I did, all right. Which we defined as um, the cone leg KW ID. Is lag k f k w. This is g k w. All right, and this is alpha k w. All right. So this we just built. This g came equipped with, and this uh, lamb came equipped with. Um, this is g applied to the identity. On KW, which is the identity on GKW. Um, all right, and this actually also is uh, follows from this square. This, this the the commutivity of this square is precisely the commutivity of this square um, for like the correct choices of, of things. It's it's. It's for x, for x is kw, and f is the identity. That, that, that square is precisely this square. So this commutes, and so alpha does, in fact, factor this thing. All right. All right, and then the last thing that I have to do is uniqueness. Uh, so we're almost there, and... Uh, I'm too lazy to go through uniqueness carefully, so I am going to say something about it. Uh, finally, uniqueness, uniqueness of um, alpha kw for uh, w and c 
follows from uh, requiring the um, square square above to commute. Right, so um, we kind of don't have a choice about what this has to be. Um, and, uh, but that only covers things that started in C and D might have objects that are not mapped to by K. So uniqueness on X in D for x not some kw um, follows from requiring uh, alpha is natural. Right, and now I'm going to put a square under this, because that was a lot of work. Um, so exercise pass this satisfy yourself it holds um, better Prove the jewel thing um, about right kind extensions. <coughs> okay. Now I only have a about a page left to go, and then we're done for the day. Um, Here's a corollary. Provided the uh, co-limits above exist, so that is the co-limits um, in the theorem, left adjoints preserve left con extensions. Um, So I could replace limits with the co-limits with limits and lefts with rights, and this is also true. Um, actually, the provided the co-limits above exist statement is unnecessary, um, but you need more work to show that it holds in generality. Uh, but having proven this statement, we can see that, that this is true. Um, because, because left adjo adjoints preserve co-limits, and because we defined our left con extension as, as a bunch of co-limits, sort of. It does everything properly to the cones, basically. All right. Uh, now let's finish with the, with the, um, the whole point I wanted to talk about con, con extensions. Um, first, with this quote uh, that I said during the break by McLean, which is that the notion of Kahn extensions subsumes all other fundamental concepts of category theory. Um, all right. I mean, it's 
bit, it's, I mean, this has been a very abstract lecture. I think it's, it's much cleaner for people to see uh, other things. All right, proposition. A, so actually, maybe I want maybe I want to start with, with 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 this bold thing at the top. So all concepts are Kant extensions. All right, proposition. A left Kant extension. Of F from C to E along a function we're going to call shriek from C to one defines a co limit. of F in D. Each existing if and only if the other does. OK. F is some functor from C to E. Shriek is a functor from C to 1. 1 has one object and one morphism, so there is only one such functor here. Uh, so I, actually, we didn't really need to give it a name, except that we, when we write lan, we want to put something in the subscript. So, all right, so what am I saying? I'm saying we've got C, F, D, 1, Shriek. And the left Kahn extension of f along shriek. And this comes with a natural transformation. Uh, and I'm saying that the co limit, that this, that the, um, that the co limit of f is the left Kahn extension along shriek of f. Now, I'm not going to put a thing here, because there's only one object in here. So it's just star. Um, and these are eta x. All right. The proof idea. Let x map onto d. Uh, this is determined by an object x in D, right? <coughs> A natural transformation eta from f to x shriek is precisely a cocone under F. Shriek sends everything to one thing, and then when you do x, it picks out an object here. So when you go this way, you pick out one object in D. When you do F, you're just doing F. And then a natural transformation from f to you've picked out that object is specifying a map from fx to, well, from f a to whichever object you've picked out, right? A natural transformation eta of this form is I'm specifying a map from f a to x shriek of a, but that's just x. And it's natural, so f a 
f f f b to x is a to a, a to b. And so going along the bottom, having a natural transformation here tells you that going along the bottom picks out an object, and this natural transformation specifies a, a co-cone under f. Um, and so if this is unique, then that's saying that th if this exists, then that's saying that all co-cones factor through a co-cone through this object. So that's the idea of the proof. Um, I don't want to go into it because it's 11.44. All right. Uh, oh, yes, thank you. So this should be B. Great. <coughs> All right. And I'm not even going to give an idea of the following. OK, OK, so, so I mean, we've already sort of shown that earlier that like a lot of the constructions that we do are subsumed by the idea of limits and colimits. Particularly, anything defined by a universal property is an initial object in some category, and so is the empty product or empty coproduct in some category. And now we've shown that Kahn extensions subsume the idea of limits and colimits. Great. Proposition. Two parts to this. If we have functors f and g with f left adjoint to g uh, and with unit uh, eta, the identity on c to g f and epsilon, so unit co-unit, epsilon from the identity on d, no. Nope. From FG to the identity on D. Yes. Um, then G eta is a left Kahn extension of the identity functor on C. along f and f epsilon is a right Kahn extension of the identity on D along g. So what am I saying? I've got the identity on c, I've got d, I've got f, I've got the unit, and then I've got g. And in fact, this is the left Kahn extension of along f of the identity on c. And similarly, I have D, D, C. This is going to be G. This is going to be F. Now I have the co-unit goes up. And this is the right Kahn extension along G of the identity on D. All right, so adjoints are also encoded by Kahn extensions. Um, and I, yep, still on board, good. <coughs> and then finally, conversely, if we have some. Uh, G 
and eta from C T G F. If this pair is a left con extension of um, the identity in C along F and F preserves this con extension then F is left F and G are joints with the unit eta. Okay, so I should say what F preserves this con extension means, and it means that F G F eta is the left con extension along F of F identity C, which is the left con extension of F along itself. All right. So uh, two sort of very important constructions that we've seen in category theory are subsumed by con extensions. Um, there's a bunch of stuff we haven't seen because I only have so much, we only have so much time to cover stuff. But say monads, which is what I think chapter five in Real's book is about, uh, is monads can also be encoded as a form of con extension. Um, all right, that's everything. Sorry, it was a very abstract day.